Welcome to Banyan Books, Branches of Wisdom. Celebrating the joy of bright ideas and heartful lifelong learning. Branches of Wisdom is a series of intimate conversations with the world's most influential authors and visionaries. We explore spirituality and the human mind, ecology and culture. Most episodes are recorded with a live audience. You can join our live events and submit questions to your favorite guests. Check out our upcoming schedule at banyan.com. Since 1970, Banyan Books has been a rich oasis at the crossroads of wisdom and philosophy, offering resources for humanity's evolving paths. We're a locally owned, independent bookstore in the heart of Vancouver's Kitsilano neighborhood. Visit us in person or shop online at banyan.com. Please subscribe follow, like, and leave your reviews for the podcast. And now, enjoy. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Banyan Books Podcast. My name is Ross McKeechee, your host. And today, we are joined by Marine Selenier. Marine Selenier is a Family Constellations facilitator, author, and motivational speaker. Born in Brittany, France, Méline was raised in Paris. After earning degrees in communications and psychology, she moved from France to Miami. There, one of her mentors, Michelle Blechner, introduced her to Family Constellations Therapy. She discovered the transformative nature of this healing practice, which would drive her path forward. Through Marine's own healing journey, she realized the unique power of the Family Constellations method. Discovering this approach revealed the missing link she was searching for in traditional therapy. The ability to get to the root of the wound in order to understand, heal, own the past, and move forward. After immersing herself into the process with Mark Wollen in Miami, she studied the method under Susie Tucker at the Burt Hellinger Institute, where she earned her certification as a Family Constellations facilitator. She then opened her own practice in New York. Ms. Selenier now has her own Family Constellations practice with offices in New York City and Miami, where she works with clients through individual sessions, in person, and remotely, as well as doing group workshops and her signature online training. Marine recognizes the core of the human experience is the universal desire to be seen, be heard, be loved, be accepted, and belong. Since 2019, she is one of the Goop talents for Goop Health. And in 2020, she joined Hay House Publishing. Today, Marine is with Banyan Books in conversation about her new book, Connected Fates, Separate Destinies, Using Family Constellations Therapy to Recover from Inherited Stories and Trauma. Marine helps the reader actively engage with and experience the benefits of Family Constellations Therapy using her personal experiences, stories from her clients, as well as affirmations, meditations, and exercises. The reader is taken through a process of identifying family system patterns and traumas and shown a way to arrive at a place of personal peace within the family system. To learn more about our guest and her work, you can visit her website, which is marinesalenier.com. Everybody join me in welcoming Marine Selenier. Marine, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. So you've been on quite a journey uh, with Family Constellations yourself before you got certified and started working with clients. I'm wondering if you can just give us an overview of your own journey and, and then how you came to actually now be an author of a book on Family Constellations therapy. So yeah, it has been a journey. You know, It's been almost 10 years now uh, that I have been doing Family Constellations. And my first um, encounter with Family Constellation was in Miami, actually where I am right now. And it's just like blew my mind to see how powerful 
it is when finally we acknowledge our family story and we can understand what we have been struggling with or dealing with and it was just an awakening honestly it was just like wow this is my reality this is my truth so while actually i was blaming my father for my chaotic love life you know like i discovered through family constellations that it was more like about disorders and secrets and things you know like that i could not understand because i was so judgmental i wanted to be a victim of my father i wanted to be a victim of men so of course it's easier but easier does not mean that you're gonna heal and when you know like i enter the knowing field the first time of my life the knowing field it's uh, where the family constellations takes place it made so much sense to me that for the first time after 25 years of struggling with love and men i was at peace i was like okay i can work with that it's concrete it's palpable and i can do it so that's how my journey uh, started with family constellations and one of my dreams at 25 26 was to get published by hay house and write a book and so 10 years later uh i have the pleasure you know like to be part of that amazing publishing house for me as a french woman it was one of the top five you know and uh, talking about family constellations through i would say a simple way like accessible for um, people, you know, that maybe have no idea about what is a constellation or uh, what is therapy. But yeah, that's what I try to do with my book. Beautiful. So you actually had this dream to publish with Hay House yeah. before you started your family constellations yeah. training. So yes. you had no idea how that was going to happen. But... No, no, no idea. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. No idea. But when I met my agent, Colleen, she was like, okay, Maureen, who would you love to have as a publisher? And I was like, honestly, a house. Because for me, it's Mayan Williamson, it's Sven Dyer, it's Gabriel Bernstein, like it's all of the big names. And, and again, in France, 10 years ago, spirituality, that was really like, you know, pretty skeptical, you know, like Frenchy people, I was as well, you know, pretty skeptical and like, yeah, sure, you know, like as believe, receive. So yes, it was uh, my dream. Wonderful, that's great. Can you maybe just, for those who might be new to Family Constellations, can you give a little bit of the background on, on its origins with Bert Hellinger and, and how it's come to be what it is today? Sure. So Bert Hellinger in the 50s went to Africa and he was uh, studying the tribe, the Zulu. And the Zulu used to heal um, whatever, you know, miscommunication, misunderstanding, through other it was not family constellations but it's kind of the same technique you know method dynamic it was all about you know like being in a circle and acknowledging what happened your emotions your feelings and Bert Hellinger could feel actually the peaceful between all of the members you know that tribe and he was like there is something there there is something there about just like being very simple through recognition, acknowledgement, belonging. So when he came back to Germany, he studied, of course, psychology. And then he actually created his own way of doing therapy and healing from your family system. Because really that therapy is a main focus is on your family system, on your family story, and how to break the cycle of any patterns, toxic behaviors, through the acknowledgement of all of them. And I would say it's it's becoming more and more popular now for maybe the past five years with you know all of the healers talking about write your own story, take charge, be responsible. But I really want to highlight that Bert Hellinger was the first one with his method focusing on uh, the family system. Mm. What, is the, what is the power in... I know the focus is decentering the self and focusing on the overall system and where we fit into that system. What is the power in that? The power in that is that you understand that you are not on your own and we are all connected. 
Because how many times my client is like, Marine, I'm on my own. I'm lonely. No one can understand my story. That's not true. We are actually part of a larger system, you know, like, and we are all connected. So it just takes one person to create a shift in deep consciousness. We can only lead by example. If you take that step forward, being like, you know what, let me see where I came from. Let me understand my roots, my story. You can then share the gift to your family. And then of course your extended family, meaning your friends, your coworkers, because again, we are all part of a system. The first one is a family. Then we have the friendship families and the school families and the work family. So when you take care of your first foundation, which is again, your family system, you can actually get a chance to be a happy adult. That's what I like about it. I think we've all, like probably a lot of people in the Banyan audience have seen that by doing their own work, it provides an opening within their family for healing to happen. I'm just curious about your own story around that and, and what kind of shifts your work has helped in your family. Well, uh, it helped a lot, actually. Um, I think the biggest shift was with my father. It's a story that I share in my book. Uh, my parents got divorced when I was 22, 23, and my father decided to disown his children. And so for almost a decade, um, I've never heard about my father, you know, like I didn't know, you know, what was happening to him, how he was doing and everything. And um, of course, it was one of my main focus because I wanted to understand what happened, why he did actually repeat the same story that he experienced also as a child, not knowing his own father. And I also wanted to help my brother. He was um, going through a difficult time in his life through addictions. So I really wanted to save him in a way, which actually we don't do it in family constellations. We don't save, we trust in each other's life, but that's another topic. And I have to say in 2015, my father came back to our life and it was just, it was beautiful because it was not about who was wrong or who was right. It was about reconciling what happened between all of us. And I have to say for the past six years, we have been recreating a family all together, my mother, my brother, my father and I. And that's for sure, you know, like it also thanks to family constellations and, um, and the way of seeing life. Because yes, it's a therapy, but I think it's also a philosophy of life. So yeah. And there are a lot of philosophical kind of core principles that it's built on. And one of them is acknowledging what is. Can you tell us about the power of acknowledging what it is and what that really means in this work? When we acknowledge what was or what is, we are just at peace, in alignment with the reality of our life, without holding on into uh, difficult situations or occurrences or pains. We just consent to what happened. And when we consent, when we are not fighting anymore, when we release the need again to who did wrong, who was a victim, who was a perpetrator, because there is no victim or perpetrator. Like before being a perpetrator, you're also a victim. You know what? Like this is also the order of the dynamic. So when you just acknowledge, you just take full responsibility for the life that you want to live. And that's beautiful and powerful. And this can create again, a shift, you know, like in full consciousness that I am aware of my story However, my story does not define who I am. And every day I can get a new chance to write a new story. Thank you. Another, another big thing is this, this mantra. This mantra, it did not start with me. Can you tell us more about that? <laughs> so the thing is, whatever you are dealing with right now, okay? honestly 90 percent of the time especially when you know you have been working on it and despite your best effort it's still stuck it's still blocked look into your family system look into your past because if you are dealing with eating disorders if you are dealing with miscarriages 
or addictions, there is another, at least one family member who went through the same process, through the same dynamic. However, because that family member maybe was unable to heal from it, was unable to speak about it, maybe he felt abandoned, rejected, estranged by the family system, you are in charge of healing on his or her behalf. The family system is always looking for reparation and reconciliation. And until one of the family members is like, okay, you know what, let me take care of it. Another member from the next generation would have to take care of it. That's an entanglement. That's what also I talk in my book. Like, it's like you are out of loyalty, re-experiencing, re-repeating the same story through, of course, your own experience, your own life, but you can see similitudes, you know, like points or situations. It might not be, of course, the same um, uh, characters, you know, like situations, but it's definitely the same root, the same dynamic. And that's when you do know you are entangled with someone and you need to disentangle yourself from that person. This, is, this brings up something I found very interesting is these entanglements and how we end up trying to either fix or redo the, the challenges or mistakes that past family members have uh, experienced. Can you, can you dive into that a little more? Each child, newborn, is the next best chance for the family system to heal and survive. A child wants to be loved. He wants to be seen, to be heard, and to be recognized. And whatever it takes, he will do it. My father is an addict. I might become an addict so that I can connect with my father, so then I belong. My mom is sad. She's depressed. Maybe let me be actually the funny one. So then my mom, you know, will laugh again and she will be so happy that I can be happy as well. Any issues that we are dealing as an adult, it's connected with a lack of belonging, with a fear of not belonging. And that's what we do in therapy. That's where the resistance part happens in any type uh, of modalities. It's when we are finally ready to take that leap of faith. We understand the process. We understand that we do not need to be an addict to be seen by our family. But the thing it's like, well, but for the past 35 years, it has been my identity. So how do I belong when I'm not an addict? How do I belong if I'm happy in my marriage? How do I belong if, I don't know, um, I'm not making money? It's always, you know, that subconscious questions of how do I belong to my family? And you, you talk about how the family system is always trying to restore order and balance. Yeah. Um, and there's this, there's a right flow of, <clears throat> excuse me, love in the family system, which, which says the parents give and the child receives. Yes. So what happens when that flow of love is broken? What happens here is going to create a disorder. If as a child, you are unable to receive from your parents, you will be unable to receive from life. You will be unable to receive from your partner. You will be unable to receive from uh, money, success, abundance, anything. What happens here is maybe your parents, they don't know themselves. They didn't do the work. They have children, but now actually they are projecting on their children, their own struggles as a child. So in a way, the child is going to become the big one. Let me take care of my mom. Let me take care of my dad. But then when you become an adult, in a way, there is so much frustration, anger, misunderstanding, that you are actually going to try through your other relationships to resolve what happened between you and your parents. But the thing is, your friends, your partner, they are not the ones with whom it happened. So then, of course, you are going to maybe develop, again, addictions, self-sabotage, 
anxiety, depression. And that's when you do know that it's time to really acknowledge a story of what happened between your parents during your childhood and take your place back as a child. There is nothing more powerful to take back your place. Otherwise, you will always like create disorder in any of your relationships. Again, at work, with your friends, with your love life, even with your own children after. Because a child needs a mom and dad. So if you couldn't find that support at that age, you're gonna ask your partner to become your father. You're gonna ask your boss to become your mom. Because again, <laughs> we need to redo the same dynamics so that I can heal. And that's all, you know, like upside down, you know, mess and chaotic, you know, at that point. Right, right, yeah. Uh, I mean, I know I've experienced some of those things myself and I'm sure everybody has. Yeah. I'm, I'm really curious to know, um, when you're working with people, how do they, how do they, can you give some examples of how they might actually, uh, how you might facilitate someone taking back the rightful place or welcoming somebody back in to that family system? So for example, the rightful place, okay? It's a place as you are as a child and you know, your parents are behind you, mom is on the left side, dad is on the right side. So for example, a single woman, Okay, let's say my client is a single woman, she's 35, and she has been struggling of being in a committed relationship. And she's like, Maureen, I'm so much in charge of my family. I'm the oldest one. I have four other siblings. My mother could not take care of us because she was dealing with anxiety and depression. Okay. So here, energetically speaking, my client is actually not single. She's already taken. She's already taken by taking the place of her mom okay raising you know like her siblings and also maybe in a way as a wife to her father so there is no room for a partner because what's going to happen with her partner she's going to ask him so much like please help me here is my burden and the partner is going to be like uh i didn't sign up for this you know what so i'm out <laughs> it's way too heavy so what we do here in that example, it's like the first breakthrough is, oh my God, that's true. I'm not single. I'm actually already a mom, a wife, and I got four children. So why do you want me at 35 to have even more? It does not make sense. So when you just go back, you visualize your mom and you're like, mom, thank you so much for the gift of life. You are my mother. I am your daughter and I take my place back. So that's a very strong and powerful statement. Then of course you need to nourish that statement, but that's a first step. And here is your rightful place. And when you are not in charge of your siblings, your mom and your dad anymore, you create room for a partner and your next family. There is also, uh, my dad is an addict, okay? And Marine, since the age of 13 years old, I've been drinking with him. That's my way, you know, like of connecting with my father, of belonging with him. But right now I'm 40 and I'm still dealing with addictions. My relationship with my wife is getting harder and harder and I cannot even connect with my children. Here is first, dad, I received a gift of life from you. You're my father, I am your son. And then it's like addiction. I give addictions back to you. It never belongs to me. And even his own father, maybe his grandfather was also an addict. Maybe his great grandfather was also an addict. So you can even extend it to the main lineage. Please take it back. And they will. Because no matter what, it did not start with you. It started, you know, like years and years ago. But because again, you wanted to belong, you wanted to be seen, you did it out of loyalty because you wanted to be loved. Because as a child, we do know that our survival depends on our parents. Without them, we cannot do anything. You talk about this on that note of our survival depending on our parents. You talk about this blind loyalty that children have to their parents 
and how that can, as we become adults and that inner child is carrying that blind loyalty, it can become a hindrance in our lives. Can you speak, like, how, what happens? What, what is this blind loyalty we feel to our parents? Why does that form? Well, because no matter what, we do know that our parents gave us life. And as much as your parents um, could have been abusive, violent, they will still be your parents. And that's probably the most difficult thing to heal. It's accepting them as your parents with also a strong boundary, like what they did was wrong. It's really like taking life, receiving life from them because it's for you. The work is for you. It's about you. It's not even about them anymore. But if you imagine, you know, behind you, so mom on the left, dad on the right, if there is two absent people right behind you, what's going to happen again? You're going to try to find substitute of your parents. But the thing is, no one else can become your mom or your dad. And of course you can tell me, Marvin, it's unfortunate. I'm not saying it's easy to process, to heal again. But the thing is by just giving the place to your parents, even as abusive as it was, it's gonna help you to move on. It's like, you know what? It's done. I consent to it now. I can move on. I can take care of my life. I can surround my life with great people. But that's why it is so important. Thank you. I just want to take a moment to let our live audience know that Marlene is going to be taking your questions uh, for the last 15 minutes. So please, I see some have already started coming in. Please keep those questions coming in and we'll get to as many of those as we can. You can type into the Q&A tab on Zoom. The Something that I found very interesting was the concept of precedence and priority in, in chapter four. Um, and I'm wondering if you can tell us about what you call the third order of love, this precedence, and how that relates to what you call priority. So, your parents, okay? The priority is not as a mom and dad. The priority is at first as a woman and man. Then it's as a couple, wife and husband, and then it's finally mother and father. Because the thing is, if you are not a happy woman, a happy man, it's going to be difficult to make your marriage work. And then it's going to be even more difficult to parent him together. So that's the order. Most of the time, what happened before and it's still happening, our society told us a woman can only be seen as a woman if she becomes a mother. So as a woman, we thought that our identity, primary identity, was to become a mother. But the thing is, yes, you can be a great mom, but if you do not acknowledge yourself as a woman, as a wife, if you don't ask your husband, your partner to support you, it's going to be difficult to raise children, finding that balance between the masculine and feminine. And then, of course, your children, they're going to absorb, they're going to witness. And maybe, you know, like, if you were not respected by your husband, maybe your daughter is going to reproduce, repeat the same pattern of attracting, manifesting, being with abusive partners. So that's the thing with order at first, you know, like woman, man, wife and husband, parents, mom and dad. Then there is also the order of love in terms of grandparents, parents, children, grandchildren. As a child, it does not matter how old you are, you will always be the little one and your parents the big one. And I know I have a reluctant client, uh, Marine, no, I think I'm the big one actually here. Yes, but you know what? It's a judgment. And minimizing your parents, you are minimizing yourself as well. It's like a projection here. When you see your parents as they are, when you give them their place, as they deserve their place as your parents, you give them back their responsibilities and you do not take care of it. And you said it earlier, Ross, as well, parents give, children take or receive. Why is that? 
it's because the best gift ever in life is life. Nothing can compete, you know, like to life itself. So because your parents gave you the best gift ever, you will never be able to give it back. It will never be enough in a way, like it's life. The only way to understand what it is to give life, it's your turn to become a parent. And then you can see the dynamic, oh, I can give now and my children can receive. But that's the only way. And you can sacrifice yourself for your parents, self-sabotage yourself for your parents. It will never, never, never give you the entire satisfaction that you gave them back. It's just impossible. How you honor your parents is by honoring your own life and moving forward. There is only one way. And it's a way forward. I want to just tell our audience that there's so many great stories in your book, Connected Fates, Separate Destinies, about the clients that you work with yeah. and how this work has impacted them, as well as you share so uh, revealingly and intimately about your own life and journey. It's beautiful. I Maybe you can give people a little bit of an idea in terms of how this kind of work is affecting people that what they're the shifts that they're able to achieve and the way their lives change by doing this family constellations work i think after a constellation you will always feel lighter like understanding maybe a new dynamic or seeing a new picture feeling light um is always one of the most you know like common adjective i would say used by my clients after a constellation also peace being at peace, being at ease, and just knowing that you are not in charge of healing your family system. That's the first, yeah, that's your inner child here, asking you, hey, please do the work, do the job. You know, I need to understand, I need to understand. Like, and as your adult self, you are just so tired because you're like, no, sweetie, I cannot do it. It's not on me. So understanding that by just doing the work for me, it will have an impact on others, you know, like actually on seven generations, three before you, three after you, it's a beautiful way to reconnect with all of them. It's a beautiful way to take, again, your place back, to belong, but through your own belief system, your values, your principles. You can take, of course, a few things coming from your family system, but then you are in charge of it. So family constellation just helps you to bring back together what was once separated. And as human beings, we don't do good with divisions, with separation, with misunderstanding, with the unknown, with secrets. We finally understand the power of recognizing what happened. For example, I share that story for my mom. My mom always felt that she had a big brother. Like it was always, you know, like a question to my grandmother, where is my big brother, where is my big brother? And my grandmother was clueless. She was like, sweetie, honestly, like you were my first pregnancy ever. Even no miscarriages before, no abortions before, you know, like so nothing. Long story short, in 2012, when my grandmother passed away, my grandfather probably felt the need to tell more, a bit more, you know, about his own story. And we discovered that actually before my grandmother, my grandfather was with another woman and that woman was pregnant. And she gave birth to a baby boy and that baby boy unfortunately died at six months old. The thing is my mom was probably just born or already maybe like at seven, eight months pregnancy with my grandmother. So no matter what she deeply felt on a subconscious level, you know, energetically speaking that someone else was there before. When my mom heard the story, I could see on her face just like, you know, when everything makes sense and you don't even need to ask any more questions, like, ah, okay, got it. It's a, it's a feeling of relief, a deep relief, like something just drop off from your shoulders. You know, it's like, okay, I understand now. And that's what happened for, for me uh, through also doing a lot of constellations for my clients. Like, it's just, it's a breakthrough. It's, um, it's an awakening. Like, it's like, it just makes sense. There is no more questions, no more the, you know, the four useless W's, who, where, when, what, like, it does not even matter anymore. You're just in the moment. Yeah. 
Beautiful. I, it, it makes me think a point for, for maybe some people to understand that aren't familiar with family constellations. Maybe you can illuminate for us how we're actually able to work with our ancestors who might not be alive or in their bodies anymore. How does that, how does that look in this work? Well, actually, the absent ones um, have the heaviest energies if they are not recognized. <laughs> so uh, absent ones or disease, it's um, also miscarriages, abortions, stillborn, early death. Like any family members who are not properly recognized, their life properly, their destiny properly recognized, will still have a very heavy impact, influence on the family system. What you can do is very simple, writing a letter of recognition. You can be like, you know what? I know there is a lot of secrets in my family. I do not need to figure out, you know, like what happened and what are they. I just want to recognize all those secrets and I am not in charge of healing those secrets. You can also say, I know that my aunt died at 20 years old. She was killed by her boyfriend I want to recognize her death and I want to give her a place. It can also be, I know one of my uncle was estranged from our family because he was homosexual. I want to recognize his life. I want to recognize that nothing was wrong with him. I give him a place. And you can also do it for any war stories, immigration, recognizing your country of origins. It's also so important. What's the history of your country, baby? Because maybe right now you are the first or second generation born in America. But before, are you from Poland, Russia, China? I don't know, you know, like what's the story here? Why did your family decide to move to America for a better future? And so maybe you have the immigrant syndrome, meaning you are feeling guilty of making money, of being successful. So you are going to find a way to self-sabotage yourself because, hey, again, I want to belong to my family. Well, actually, the best thing to tell your children is do better than us. That's also how the family system can survive and give birth to new generations. Now, I haven't done any um, uh, formal family constellations work myself, but Jacob, our, our producer, and other friends who I've spoken to who, who've done group family constellations work say, there's never a dry eye in the room. It's just a profound, profound experience. It's, it's intense. It is because at, at first, of course, Russ, I ask a few questions about your story, about you know your parents and your childhood, but then the real work happened through your emotions, through your feelings. The only way to really and deeply heal is through your emotions. It's processing your emotions intellectually, like the right side and the left side of your brain working together. So we say the story, we just got a few clues here and there, and then it's all about your gut feeling. Because you can tell me, Marina, I hate my mom. First of all, I will believe you, that's for sure. And then you will see in the field that actually your inner child, your little boy is craving for that love, is craving for that attention. And when you finally give yourself permission to be like, you know what? I don't hate you. Actually, I felt abandoned. I felt rejected. I just wanted to be seen by you. That's when things can start moving on. We hide behind excuses. Behind again, you are wrong, I am right. No, that's exactly what I say when a client's like, Marine, I'm not here for me, I'm here for my mom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm like, that's great because your mom is not here with us, you know, so let's work with you. And maybe then you can share the gift with your mom, okay? <laughs> that's exactly what it is. It's not about your mom, it's not about your dad, it's about you and how you've been holding on to the story. That's where your, your pain is. It's not in the story. It's how you've been holding on into it. It's so wonderful. Uh, you know, um, you bring it then to, to in the book, you bring it to our, our relationships, our intimate partnerships. 
And of course, it's unavoidable that in our intimate partnerships, all of our family stuff is going to come into play. You talk about these three yeses that we yeah. need to say have in 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 our partnerships. Can you talk about those? Yes, yeah, sure. I love talking about those. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so the three yes, because long story short, whatever you did not understand with your parents, whatever you did not heal with your parents or cope with your parents, you will ask subconsciously of course your partner to take care of it on their behalf. Okay, so that's the dynamic here. So the three yes. The first yes is a hundred percent yes to your partner as he or she is. How many times you're like, I'm sure you can change. I'm sure you know I can change it. No, 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 no. No, you just accept him or her as I take you as you are. You are perfect as you are. We can grow together. We can heal together, but I take you as you are. That's a first yes, a full yes to your partner. Then the second yes is a yes to your family in law. <laughs> it's not about love here, okay? Don't get me wrong, but just about respect and acceptance. Because guess what? Even so you do not like them, you cannot stand your mother in law. Well, I guess she did a great job because you are right now with her son. So there is something positive out of her, okay? So again, it's a yes to the family in law as just as they are. Because when you reject your family in law, sooner or later, you will reject a part of your partner as well. Because your partner is part of that family. So that's also the respect of the past of your partner here. Okay? And then the third yes is a yes to your own destiny as a yes to the destiny of your partner. Meaning sometimes, maybe your destinies are going to just like go apart. That's okay. It does not mean it's a failure. It does not mean, you know, like you did something wrong. It just means my destiny is even more important than your destiny. And I have to acknowledge it as well. And because I have love for you, I have tenderness for you. I also want you to be happy. So maybe that's the end of our relationship. And that's okay, because I will know that you will be happier after that. So that's a three yes. I love that. I, I really love that part of the book. I know I'm going to be referring back to it. Um, if it's okay with you, we've got some really great audience questions. Sure. Yeah. I love that. Okay, great. There's a question here from Lisa who says, how is it possible to heal and move on with people in your family who refuse to see, acknowledge, or have any part in a healing process? I have three who have died and three remaining who have no interest whatsoever in connection without control, manipulation, detachment, etc. Well, thank you so much, Lisa, for your question. The thing is, it's not about them. You are not doing the work for them. You're doing the work for you. So you, by just acknowledging what you can acknowledge, you will break the cycle and you will free yourself. And maybe they will never follow you. Maybe they are never going to join you. And that's okay. Because here, what you are trying to do is change them. Maybe they are not ready. Maybe they are not ready, you know, like to do that deeper work. But you are ready to do that deeper work. So you can still do it. That's a thing as well. Like, we think that we need others in order to move on. That's not true. Maybe, of course, it will take more courage. Because you will feel more on your own at some point. But if you expect others to understand you, you will never be happy. You are doing the work for you. Then again, you lead by example. If it works, that's great. If it does not, that's great as well. You know, at first, my mom, when I talk about family constellation, she was like, what is that? She even thought I was in a cult. She was like, what is that? But then finally, after a few, she was like, no, I like it. So Lisa, do the work for yourself. Gift yourself. And then maybe they will follow. And if not, it's okay. Respect their own destinies. That's very important. No judgment here. Thank you. There's a question here from Jim. Jim says, Marine, I filled the role of the baby, the clown the scapegoat and the surrogate husband to my mother in the family. I've had difficulty getting serious about my role and calling in life. 
Can you possibly elaborate on these roles? So Jim, thank you for your questions. So the first thing first is to take your place back. That's for sure. So I don't know what happened between your parents, why your father could not be there, you know, as a husband, but it's definitely not your place. So the first thing is to really, it's even maybe the recognition of the masculine in your family. Maybe right now the masculine is seen as weak, like maybe absent or not being here for the feminine, for the woman. So that's the first thing to do, I would say. It's taking your place as a man. What is my identity as a man? What is my own definition of being a man and standing up for who I am and what I believe in? Um, you can also definitely do, for example, you know, like the recognition exercise, like whatever happened, I recognize it, but mom, I am your son. And that's more than enough. Because maybe also there is a sense of like, I was not enough as a son, so I had to do more. But you are enough. And then there is maybe also some work to do with your inner child. Because right now that's not, because you as an adult, you are aware of the pattern of the situation. But it's your little boy still trying to figure out like, no, 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 we are good as a surrogate, you know, like, like, please, please do not go any further. So maybe also your inner child is frightened, scared actually of losing his place. And you need to reassure him that you still have a place and your place is with me. So I will start um, from there. Thank you. There's a question from Jillian who says, thank you, Meline. How does taking your place back as the child work when your parents are elderly and need your help? <laughs> Well, it does not matter. They're still your parents. <laughs> so for sure, you're still the child. Okay. And of course, when our parents become, you know, older, sometimes they need us, but it depends how you are going to respond to their needs. There is, you know, like, I'm still going to trust you, mom and dad, but I also make decisions for you asking as well for your permission. For example, my grandmother had Alzheimer's, okay? So at the end of her life, my mom had to take care of her. She had to make the decision to place her in an institute because my grandfather could not take care of her anymore. In that sense, it's like, I can see that my mom could not take care of herself anymore. So I also gave her, you know, like the possibility of being surrounded by adults taking care of her. That's, you know, a way of taking care of her mom without interfering with a parent's child. That's the best I can do. I'm not going to take you at my place because I do know that with my children, I won't be able to take care of you. Like here, I will be sacrificing my life. That's so just a way of how you see uh, what does it mean for you that my parents need me. Because maybe at the end, it's actually you, you need them more than they do actually. But you are hiding behind that truth because it's always scary also to lose your parents, to see your parents, you know, like becoming older. So ask yourself all of um, these questions as well. Where do you stand in that reality? Thank you. And thanks everyone for keeping the questions coming in. There's one from Anna who says, I struggle as an artist and realize that I always felt ashamed of my father for being a failed artist, quote unquote. What family constellation resolution or work could help with this pattern? So uh, thank you, Anna. Um, so the first thing is to acknowledge your father <laughs> and to see him as whole and complete as a strong father. Like by judging your father, you are judging yourself. It is through the father, it is through the masculine that we uh, take actions with our career. So right now you are stuck because you are not facing your career. You are facing your father asking him, hey, dad, if I do better than you, is that okay with you? It's the guilt of doing better than one of your parents or both of them. So you just create self-sabotage and then your career is stuck. So your father made his own choices he is responsible for his life and you are not. So give him back, you know, that maybe sense of failure and be like, you know what, dad, thanks to you, 
I am an artist. And I'm going to honor that gift that you gave me by being successful. And this is bingo. Thank you. There's a question from Sony who says, can family constellations work heal money stories that keep repeating in life? Yeah. Loss of money, loss of people. That's what we say. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah, no, sure. We can definitely, money is only energy, you know, like it's like, um, I know myself first, my self value. So maybe someone died, you know, like, um, very poor or very rich, like whatever happens, this depends on your story, but yes, family constellations, we can work on any, uh, themes or subjects. So it does not matter. Thank you. There's a really nice question here from Stephanie who says regarding blind loyalty to parents after the mantra of thank you for the gift of life, but I'm ready to take my place back. My question is how, what are the first steps? <laughs> That's um, by setting up your boundaries, by reacting differently, behaving differently, by acknowledging your own needs. What do I need to be a happy woman? Do I need to call my mom every day? Do I need to let my mom call me every day? This is your job then as a responsible adult to create a boundary. And I know my clients are like, but Marie, my mom is so hard. She does not understand. I'm like, that's not your problem. As long as you understand yourself and what you need, it will work. But it asks a lot, that's for sure. Then it's you, you know, like setting up a new belief system, a new routine, a new boundary and respecting what you need. And maybe your mom is going to be pissed off. Maybe she's going to be upset, but here you need to talk to her. You need to be like, mom, I understand, but it's also my life. And if you cannot understand that I have the right to take care of my own life, I will need to take some distance, healthy distance. Thank you. There's a question from Jane who says, is this type of therapy beneficial for a family member who suffered sexual abuse as a child, not by a family member, but by a caregiver? Yeah. Yes. It's part of the extended family. Um, I work a lot actually with sexual abuse, sexual trauma. So yes, it is very helpful. Um, the way we do it is long story short, we consent to what happened. We give a place to um, the situation, to the perpetrator as well, with, of course, a clear boundary to protect. And uh, then the deeper work is also with um, the inner child or inner teenager, you know, like how old you were at that um, time. So that's what we do. Yes, it's actually very powerful. And I did actually heal my sexual trauma as well uh, through family constellation. So, yeah. Thank you. There's a question from Suzanne. Suzanne asks, have you ever worked with adoptees? As an adoptee in reunion, I feel my family constellation is profoundly complex, navigating two sets of parents, two family systems, and my own yeah. group. Yeah, I know, I hear you. <laughs> yes, uh, I did work uh, with uh, adoptees, you know, clients. I'm not gonna lie, that's one of the most difficult um, dynamic to heal from because like you say it's my biological parents my adoptive parents my two stories and it's like four people behind me and it's the acknowledgement through the adoptive parents we recognize your biological parents because without them we would not have been able you know to become your parents but it can also be um a beautiful way of having a strong foundation and finally finding your roots in these two stories. So yes, I've done it and I've seen actually, um, I think actually I share uh, a story in my book. Yes, yes, I share a story in my book of adoptions actually. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Thank you. There's a question from Val uh, who asks, how does the trauma about death and loss work in family constellations? Uh, we recognize death. That's very important. 
when we keep death as a secret, as a shame, as a guilt, that's when death, you know, like is heavy in the family system. Uh, that's actually a common dynamic of um, someone being in between life and death. I want to follow my mom. I want to follow my baby. I want to follow my partner. But the thing is, you cannot be between death or life. You need to make a choice. And so we say, I choose life. Um, for example, to my miscarriage, um, I will honor your life by honoring mine. That's very important. The disease ones, they do not want us to follow them. When we follow them, we are again, like not here and there, you know, like, and we are again, create self-sabotage behaviors or um, dangerous behaviors as well. You are also meeting maybe dangerous people for us. So it's very important to recognize death and any early death or again miscarriages things like that murders so then you do not need you know to have that dance with death thank you a, a big thanks to everybody for for submitting your questions as always we we get so many great questions from the banyan community and so much engagement and um we're, we're very grateful to everybody who shows up live and who tunes in on our YouTube channel or anywhere podcasts can be found to check out the recordings of these events. And to Jacob Steele, our events curator and, um, and podcast producer who edits all of it and then gets it up for everybody to view or listen to. Thank you, Jacob. Um, we've been speaking to Marine Selenier about her new book, Connected Fates, Separate Destinies. And um, Marine, if people wanna work with you can they work with you remotely as well as in yes. person? Yes, yes, right. I work remotely, yes. That's a great thing about Zoom. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> so, yeah, yes. And if they want to learn more about you, they can go to your website. Yeah, uh, my website and Instagram. I, every day I post something about family constellations. So I think it's a great way to understand how it works. That's beautiful. Maybe as a parting word, you can just let us know Connected fate, separate destinies. What's the difference between fate and destiny? <laughs> fate is, it's part of you. It's part of the system. It's your background. Your destiny, it only belongs to you. The fate is in Zulu, they say, I am because we are. So I would say the we are is a fate, part of your family system, and the I am is your destiny. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And together they work. That's great. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak to us and wishing Thank you, you so much. Thanks for joining us for Branches of Wisdom, a podcast of Banyan Books and Sound. Canada's spiritual and healing resource since 1970. Our podcast producer is Jacob Steele. The show is edited by Abdo Habani. And I'm your host, Ross McKeechee. Watch all our conversations on YouTube by searching for Banyan Books or listen on your favorite podcast platform. Please subscribe, follow, like, and leave your reviews and comments. We love to hear from you. For all our live events, books, and more, visit us at banyan.com.